Hello students. Today we will discuss about the Terrigo palatine fossa. Whenever you are reading the normal lateralis in the skull, you are having this term that is Terrigo palatine fossa. So let's discuss about the boundaries and location of this fossa. Fossa. So whenever you are having the Terrigo palatine fossa, the first question comes is where you will find this fossa. Now my dear students, the first thing which I will clear you that this fossa is a hidden area. It is not visible. Uh, in the normal lateralis, you are able to see only a small opening in the lateral side and that is the deep area behind the maxilla. So whenever you are reading the pterygo palatine fossa, you always keep this thing in mind that it is the area which is lies behind the maxilla or your upper jaw and it lies deep to the ramus of mandible. That means if you are going from the ramus of mandible, now this is the ramus of mandible, just deep to that first you will find infratemporal fossa and just deep to the infratemporal fossa you will find pterygo palatine fossa. So from lateral to medial if you want to see the infratemporal and pterygo palatine fossa you have to first remove this uh, ramus of mandible, clear? So what are the boundaries of pterygo palatine fossa? So the anterior boundary is formed by the superior medial part of the posterior surface of maxilla. So this is the first boundary that is the posterior surface of maxilla. So here if you will see that this is the posterior surface of maxilla and behind the posterior surface of maxilla you are having a hidden area and this hidden area is the pterygo palatine fossa. Now what is the posterior boundary? It is formed by the root of the pterygoid process and the part of the greater wing of sphenoid. So this is the pterygoid process which you know and deep to that pterygoid process you will have this pterygo palatine fossa. Now what is the medial boundary? Now medial boundary is very important. Medial boundary is contributed by the palatine bone. What is that? Palatine bone. Now on the medial side which part of the palatine bone? Answer is perpendicular plate of palatine bone. The orbital and sphenoidal process of the bone also take part. Now see, whenever you are reading the pterygo palatine fossa, the word is having the pterygo and palatine. That means basically it is bounded by the pterygoid process of sphenoid bone and palatine bone. So palatine bone is having the major contribution on the medial wall and I have to clear this thing that medial wall separates this fossa from the nose. That means if you can see deep to that this portion is actually the palatine bone and if you will puncture this plate, this is known as perpendicular plate, you will enter into the nasal cavity. So this perpendicular plate basically separates the pterygo palatine fossa from your nasal cavity. Now what is the lateral boundary? Now if you see you will find that this is this is the lateral margin and this lateral margin is communicating this pterygo palatine fossa with infratemporal fossa and that gateway is known as pterygo maxillary fissure, clear? Pterygo maxillary means it is pterygoid process, this is maxilla, so this fissure is known as pterygo maxillary fissure. Then what is the superior boundary? Now this is the superior boundary and this superior boundary is again formed by the sphenoid bone. And what is the inferior boundary? Now inferior boundary has become again important because inferior boundary is again formed by palatine bone and which palatine bone? Part of the palatine bone answer is pyramidal process. Now this question has been asked so many times that pyramidal process of palatine bone form which boundary of pterygo palatine fossa? So we have seen that palatine bone is contributing in the two wall, medially you have perpendicular plate and in the lower part it is having the pyramidal process and this pyramidal process lies between the maxilla anteriorly and pterygoid process posteriorly. So here this is your pyramidal process. Now this small process is closing the fossa from inferior side and this process lies between the maxilla and your pterygoid process, clear? Now what is the communication of pterygo palatine fossa? So we have seen this that this is the gateway of your pterygo palatine fossa. This gateway is known as pterygo maxillary fissure and 
on the lateral side you are having infratemporal fossa deep to the ramus of mandible and on inner side you will have pterygo palatine fossa so for the better understanding of pterygo palatine fossa this is my sincere advice to go with these video clips again and again two three times so that the things become very clear so first we will see the formation and communication so this is the normal lateralis right now you are seeing the zygomatic bone now we have removed the mandible and deep to this mandible you are can you can appreciate this is the infratemporal fossa so one by one we will remove the bones and we will try to locate the, the pterygo palatine fossa so first we will remove this zygomatic bone now deep to the zygomatic bone you can see this is the greater wing of sphenoid and the this is the maxilla so we have removed the maxilla now i told you that this fossa lies behind the maxilla so here in this area you have to concentrate now this is your palatine bone now this palatine bone is having a perpendicular plate now this perpendicular plate is separating this small area of pterygo palatine fossa from the nasal cavity so you have to keep this thing in mind that whenever you are having the uh, pterygo palatine fossa it is behind the maxilla so we have to remove the maxilla and once you will remove the maxilla you are able to appreciate the pterygo palatine fossa and when you will see from the lateral side you can find this gap now this is known as a fissure between the pterygoid process and the maxilla so it is known as pterygo maxillary fissure and this fissure communicating this fossa with the infra temporal fossa clear so my dear students whenever you are having the pterygo palatine fossa formation the medially you should keep this thing in mind you have perpendicular plate of your palatine bone now there is a one more uh, video clip in this clip we will see more detailed uh, formation now first you will find that this is your sphenoid bone and these are the two palatine bones clear now you have to understand that pterygo palatine fossa is anterior to the sphenoid bone behind the maxilla medially bounded by the palatine bone bone and laterally it is open so posteriorly you will have sphenoid bone medially you will have palatine bone anteriorly you will have maxilla and laterally it is open so posteriorly you will have the sphenoid bone and these are the two palatine bones now here you can see that these horizontal plates of the palatine bone join together to form the posterior part of the hard palate and these perpendicular plates are going to form the posterior most part of the lateral wall of the nose so if you will see this video clip what you are able to understand that how this pterygo palatine fossa form so if you will join or make a articulation between the palatine bones and the sphenoid bones you will realize the position of your pterygo palatine fossa so you can see now this is the architecture of the nose has been formed posteriorly and just behind just on the lateral side of this perpendicular plate this gap is present now this gap which is present here is going to form your pterygo palatine fossa and in this area you will have the openings you can see the foramens are present now this is the placement of the maxilla if you will separate all the three bones the sphenoid bone the palatine bone and the maxillary bone and you will find that this gap which is present here is behind the maxilla and on the lateral side of the perpendicular plate now this is again a important feature to understand that still you will find a, a pyramidal process of the palatine bone and that pyramidal process will uh, come between the posterior part of the maxilla and the lower end of your pterygoid process so when you will see the normal lateralis you have to appreciate this gap and this gap is lies behind the maxilla and to enter into this gap you have to first follow the fissure and that is known as pterygo maxillary fissure so this is the uh, again i am showing this clip again and again to make this clear that whenever you are reading the pterygo palatine fossa it should be very clear in your mind the pterygo palatine fossa lies on the lateral side of your nasal cavities posteriorly anterior to your pterygoid process behind the maxilla clear so this is what you have to uh, keep this thing in mind so what are the communication so anteriorly it communicate with the inferior orbital fissure posteriorly 
I already told you it is having the openings through the sphenoid bones and these openings are connecting it with the middle cranial fossa or the middle cranial cavity through the foramen rotundum which is very important opening. It is also having a foramen lacerum continuity with the pterygoid canal and it is having continuity with the pharynx through a opening is known as palatino-vaginal canal. So these are the three openings which are op uh, having the uh, passage through the sphenoid bone and then they ultimately open into the pterygopalatine fossa because this uh, sphenoid bone forming the posterior wall of pterygopalatine fossa. Now when you will have the medial communication, I told you that medially you will have perpendicular plate of the palatine bone which is separating it from the nasal cavity. So there is a channel through which you will have a entry of the structure inside the uh, nas uh, nasal cavity and that opening or channel is known as sphenopalatine foramen. So this question is so many time you have in exam that sphenopalatine foramen is a communication between, answer is pterygopalatine fossa and nasal cavity. Laterally I told you that it is having a, a small gate and that fissure is known as pterygomaxillary fissure through which it communicates with the infratemporal fossa and inferiorly you will have a pyramidal process and through that pyramidal process you are having a small tunnel which is known as lesser and greater palatine canals. Then what are the contents you will find in pterygopalatine fossa? In pterygopalatine fossa we are having the third part of maxillary artery and from the foramen rotundum maxillary nerve is entering into the pterygopalatine fossa and you are having a very important ganglia that is known as pterygopalatine ganglia which is a parasympathetic ganglia. So now at the end of this class of pterygopalatine fossa, what is the most important concept that pterygopalatine fossas are present behind the two maxillas in front of the two pterygoid processes, medially they are bounded by the palatine bone perpendicular plate and laterally they are communicating with the infratemporal fossa, clear? And the communication from the pterygopalatine fossa uh, medially into the nasal cavity is known as sphenopalatine foramen and posteriorly it is communicating with the foramen rotundum, foramen lacerum and with the pharynx. So this is the most important concept about the pterygopalatine fossa. So this is all for today's class. Thank you.